for the second. India have won the test match. India have won the series. Hello and welcome to a new episode of the 81 All Out podcast. This is your host Siddhartha Vaidyanathan and I'm joined today by the regular crew Mahesh, Ashoka and Kartikeya. Uh, we're here to talk about uh, the league phase of the World Cup which uh, is pretty much done now. In fact, as I speak, uh, Pakistan and England are uh, currently playing. Looks like uh, England are in a pretty good position there to win that game. Uh, England suddenly looking, I mean, with Ben Stokes is coming into form, England suddenly starting to post some good scores. Uh, then the final game of the league phase is India versus the Netherlands tomorrow, uh, which, uh, you know, in all likelihood, India could win, but uh, you never know with this World Cup and surprises and the Chinna Swami, uh, you never know what could happen there. Just a quick note, uh, we missed, we had to miss last week because of some um, unforeseen events and in India. A lot of things, travel, unexpected travel, and then there was also some other stuff that I was busy with in my personal life, so I had to skip it. Thanks so much for those who were looking, I mean, asking about it and saying that you were looking forward to it. It makes us feel that, okay, that uh, there is some, so there are some listeners who are, who wait for what we say, which is always refreshing. Many, many games have happened since we spoke last. So it's going to be hard to cover every single one of them. So we'll talk broadly from a team perspective and uh, drill into how each team has been doing, the ups and downs, the semifinals uh, now pretty much decided and uh, looking forward to. So yeah, I think um, one of the things uh, we can start with is, of course, uh, an innings that's been called uh, the greatest one-day innings ever. Uh, and uh, one of the most freakish uh, innings you can see, and it strikes me that the World Cup is actually one is is in in a way the World Cup is unique because you get to see Australia play against Afghanistan in the neutral ground of um, in a neutral venue like Mumbai, which is uh, actually favors Afghanistan uh, somewhat with their spinners and with the conditions because otherwise, I mean Australia traveling to Afghanistan is. Uh, you know, who knows when that is going to happen in the future. And if Afghanistan traveled to Australia, the chance of them getting conditions favoring them is close to nil. So the World Cup provides you this opportunity, right, to watch this. And it provides neutrals neutrals to watch it in a venue. And then to get this kind of a match, first of all, I thought Afghanistan batting and getting that big score was itself such a huge Achievement. I mean, Ibrahim Zardran getting a hundred. I mean, that was a beautiful hundred to watch. Some of the shots he played, that ramp over the keeper, some of the, you know, driving was really fluent. And then to see Australia collapse like that, I mean, they were almost out of the game. And of course, then came um, the footworkless genius. And I mean, poor guy, I mean, Maxwell, it was like he was cramping and he was, uh, he, I thought that, you know, this was like, Probably what Dean jo- the Dean Jones, the famous Dean Jones innings in Chennai would have been like, uh, which was spoken about, uh, of course, uh, and written about extensively in Beyond the Bazaar. So, yeah, uh, what did you make of that innings? For me, uh, for one of the things from that was stunning for me was that how, how much we emphasize footwork in cricket, right, from the very early stages. And here you have this guy who's basically just like golfing. He's standing there waiting for the ball, and to his advantage, Afghanistan kept bowling to him rather than bowling away from him or rather than making him lunge, which is what uh, test teams usually do when a when a batter is injured, a, a test uh, spinner would try and get the batter to at least lunge forward a bit and move forward, and Maxwell wasn't able to even come down the track. But the, still, the fact to just watch him stand there and, you know, use his hands... Uh, reversing and hitting, uh, you know, hitting those clean swings. It was an unbelievable uh, innings to watch. Yes, he had a lot of luck. He was dropped. He had a really close DRS call. In fact, it was so close, he even started walking off when he saw the ball was not um, pitched outside leg. But it probably missed by like half an inch or something uh, in terms of the projection. But yes, even that, even despite that, 201 in a one-day chase, Remarkable effort. Yeah, I was actually caught uh, 
uh, caught in like some work while the match was happening. So I was in Delhi for like a business trip. And uh, fortunately, I was surrounded by a lot of Aussies. They were like uh, tracking the scores uh, pretty closely when Afghanistan was batting. And once like the Afghanistan innings ended, we rushed back to the hotel, to the bar to watch. And, uh, and we were all watching and, and it seemed like it seemed like it was, you know, the, the door was shut for Australia. And we had some uh, English colleagues as well who were trying to kind of needle the Aussie colleagues. It was a good sort of fun banter, uh, sort of atmosphere. And uh, coincidentally, it also happened to be the first day. So I worked for a Danish company. So we had a lot of Danish colleagues. Uh, they were all trying to understand what's going on in cricket. So they came and sat with us. And, and and by the time they joined us, Maxwell was like absolutely hitting them all over the park. They must be like, you know, th- this is the first cricket match that, that they're watching. They must be going back from this thinking, oh my God, is cricket so exciting? Is this why people talk about it all the time? And if they ever happen to watch another match, they're going to be so disappointed. <laughs> and uh, I hope you told them it, this is not cricket. It's not cricket. I hope you cricket. told them that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, till then they were like, oh, how can you watch for eight hours? How can you watch for seven hours? Then we were saying, oh, this is a shorter format. The longer format is longer than this. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till they hear about timeless tests. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, the, especially the point about bowling away from the, the body that you, you talked about. So, the, there was an English guy who was saying, oh, why are, why are Afghanistan bowling into him all the time? Why can't they just make him lunge and reach and, you know, bowl outside the option? And then uh, this guy was trying to explain to them, this is what I want him to do so that you draw him forward, you make him go outside the option. And f- funnily, I forgot who the bowler was, but he bowled one ball exactly the way that this English guy was asking for. He just reverse swept it for a six. <laughs> incredible. Like just, you know, that was just the most incredible shot I've seen. Goodness. You know, it was precisely what like seasoned cricket observers would, would want Afghanistan to do. And the first ball he does, he reverse sweeps it for a six of a fast bowler. It was just madness. And even when he was batting so well, I was thinking that he's going to run out of luck at some stage, you know. But he just kept going and going and, and he also had cramps in between and, and I thought, okay, that's it, he's gone. Then I don't know what magic massage he got. In fact, he started hobbling better after the massage. Uh, he was he was taking the singles uh, after that pretty easily. But just, I mean, sure, not just, I mean, we talk about luck in the beginning part of the innings where he was dropped and whatnot. And even later, of course, you had to have luck to have so many things falling in place. But that's true of most innings, right? There, there is no such innings as chanceless innings. So we should not undermine the innings based on the fact that he got chances. How many how many batsmen can go on to achieve what he did even with the amount of chances that he got? Just an absolutely incredible innings. In fact, think of it this way. Had Mujib uh, caught that catch, which was a pretty straightforward chance, right? He, he sort of uh, flicked it to a short fine leg and Mujib ended up dropping it. Had he caught that catch, the world would have been deprived of that innings, man. Like, when else will Maxwell... I mean, what are the... Maxwell could play several innings, right? And he has already played several freakish innings. But how many times is he going to get a chance to bat for that long, to chase such a big target and score 201? So, it's almost like, okay, he dropped the catch and they, you know, that was a bad thing. But also, it was a good thing for no audience point of view. We got to see that. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. of course, we are forgetting the most uh, important part of that partnership. His partner at the other end, who played the most the crucial role. No, no, no. Katie, as the captain, as the captain said, Maxwell played his role well. <laughs> Katie, what a captain's knock huh? from Cummins. Great, great knock. It's anyway, not a captain's yeah. knock. It's a captain's <laughs> block. He just was masterful. He, he managed Maxwell and inspired him. It's like, you see, <laughs> after Maxwell... After Maxwell uh, had his cramp, no, he took that one, he hit a six and then he took that one single and then he collapsed with cramp and he had like treatment and all. After that, Cummins played about, played out about eight or nine balls quietly while Maxwell was resting at the non-striker's end. He just did it basically just to give Maxwell a breather, you know, so that Maxwell didn't face a ball for like five or six minutes almost. You know, that that that's real awareness. You know, that's real sort of care. You know, but the 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 thing about that innings was like 
as great as it was, as astonishing as the hitting was, I mean, you should not be surprised that Maxwell is doing it because Maxwell is a genius. But it's also that, you know, that Bombay pitch, once the help for the new ball, uh, the ball got a little old and the he- there was no more help uh, that usually comes with the new ball. I mean, that was a real road, man. That, that, you know, it was plumb. It was true. Though you could trust the bounce, you could trust the pace. You know, Maxwell was not mistiming anything. You know, even though he had no foot on. That that's extraordinary. Like he he's he's absolutely trusting the the pitch when he's playing like that. You know, and every time the pitch didn't let him down. That's just, that's the extraordinary part of that that day. If Afghanistan had like one player like say Aravinda De Silva or Ricky Ponting, one batsman like that, they would win a lot more in these conditions with their spin attack. Because they can bowl so many good overs out of the team. I mean, they've got those four spinners and their fast bowlers are also not bad. I mean, you compare, for example, this Afghanistan attack to, let's say, the Sri Lankan attack of the late 1990s. You know, uh, I mean, the fast bowling is pretty much the same. And the spin, do you think Dharma Sena and Upul Chandana would get into this lineup? You know, ahead of Rashid Khan or Noor or uh, or Mujib? I don't think so. I mean, I mean, at that time, Sri Lanka was in a situation where if they had anybody who's bowling above medium pace, they thought it was great. You know, a lot of teams were actually like that, to be perfectly honest. You know, India were like that. Sri Lanka was like that. A lot of teams in the uh, subcontinent are that in the 90s were like, okay, you are able to bowl slightly quick. Come. <laughs> you know, because... Yeah, I mean, we can do we can do a whole podcast on um, Sri yeah. Lankan medium pacers from the 90s and 2000s, yeah. right? I mean, there were that many of them. Yeah. Yeah. Like, all the way right up to like Kula Sekara, you know, like yeah. there's been so, so many other... Well, just medium pace and just military medium, not quick, but you know, they enough to take the shine of the ball and give it to Murli Dara. How that, dare, that how dare. Lusekra was the number one bowler <laughs> in Odia cricket for so long. There is forget, a story about Kulasekra. Forget, forget Kulasekra. How dare you guys forget, uh, forget uh, Dilhara Fernando, the pace express. Eric Kupashata. My favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eh, Dilhara Fernando was uh, heralded oh, no. as the fastest bowler to have uh, come out of Sri Lanka. But at that point, he probably was. Also. He probably was, yeah, yeah. And he had his moments, for sure. So, yeah. so, so just on the Sekara, there was a time where I, I took an auto Pushpa in, Kumara. in, he was in Colombo. Uh, I was trying to chat up with the driver about cricket, you know. And he was saying, oh, I used to follow cricket a lot these days. I didn't follow. And, you know, I was asking him who's his favorite cricketer. And I was expecting him to say... Jai Surya or Aravinda or whatever, Murli or whatever. And he said, Kula Sekra. I was just blown away by that. I, I, I was not prepared for that answer. <laughs> so I asked him, why? He said, oh, he was a good friend of mine. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good reason. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, forget about Sri Lanka's uh, history. Uh, continue with, uh, yeah, Afghanistan. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think Afghanistan, if they had one really good batsman, they, they could... I mean, already with whatever they had, they managed so much. But, you know, their batting is maybe 10-15% below what the the top sort of the real contenders batting is, you know, in both in terms of power and depth. But whatever they have, they made the most of it. I mean, I thought in this tournament, their batting against Australia and their chase against Pakistan were just outstanding. You know, really measured, professional. I mean... They, a lot of their players play a lot of professional uh, and they are professionals in a lot of leagues and they have a lot of experience of match practice. They have a lot of match practice against sort of roughly this quality, first class quality cricket and it shows. You know. Uh, yeah, they've easily been the revelation, you know, they've, they've, they've been the team that we probably thought Bangladesh would be uh, in the yeah, tournament. When exactly. we in the preview, when we said Bangladesh could make the semi-finals, we thought yeah. that okay, this is the we were expecting these kind of performances because Bangladesh also have a good spin attack and you know they of course have been playing for much longer 
Uh, they have more ex- many of their players have more experience. Uh, so, and also, but yeah, Afghanistan also, have done that. Bangladesh also had slightly bigger names. No, Litton, uh, Mushfiqur, Shakib, and Tamim didn't come, but if he had come, yeah, then he. Had, uh, but the thing is that the the Maxwell innings is just you know we've we've talked about this before, right? In T20, like Mag- Maxwell is sort of one out of three or four sort of certified geniuses of the last ten fifteen years. Uh, there are only like I can think of only two players in the last 15 years, 20 years, even longer actually, who could play that sort of innings for that length of time. You know? One is Maxwell and the other is De Villiers. You know, nobody else has that sort of the stroke range and power and eye. Australia themselves are being have been extraordinary in this World Cup because they have won now seven, as we record, they have won seven games in a, in a row. Yeah. Uh, only, only India have won more. But with Australia, no, their bowlers have not at all been, you know, at their peak. If you take Zampa out, their bowling is like is is is, is equivalent to what Pakistan have done, right? And even if you see their batting, it's not been consistently one or two people performing. It's just been Maxwell two centuries, Warner two, uh, Travis had it one today, uh, Mitchell Marsh hit one. The main batters that you think, which is Steve Smith and Labushin, they have not actually uh, uh, worked out the way Australia would have wanted them to work out. But despite all that, they have won seven. So, Australia have had a very interesting World Cup. It's, I mean, the, if I have to give an analogy, it is like India's 2015 World Cup. You know, not many batters hit gold outside of Shikhar Dhawan. And bowlers did reasonably well. But in 2015, you always got the sense that India were not going to win the World Cup. Even though, you know, people kept saying we bowled everybody out, we kept winning matches. But 2015, there was a sense that this year, we we are not, you know, looking good. And that's true. And in 2015, India should play everybody also. That was the super, that was two groups, no? Mm, Yeah. Yeah, two so, groups. They ended up winning all their games till the semi-finals, basically. Yeah, and, and one other thing about Afghanistan, right? I mean, I was telling this the other day. I mean, in 15 years of uh, 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 cricket, all cricket that they have played, Test, ODI and T20, they are showing, you know, caliber of, of cricket. The caliber of cricket that India showed in the late 90s and early 2000s. They, are, they have like a group of uh, one superstar, for India, it was Sachin. For uh, Afghanistan, it's Rashid in their bowling. But others are doing really well. I mean, they, I mean, Ramachar and Hashmat Shahidi. Uh, I, I thought they, I was, I was telling you guys also, they are slowing things down, but they didn't. They ended up chasing 280, 270 regularly. And, uh, you know, they have found this one guy, uh, Omar Zai. I, I, I mean, if there is one player, Emerging yeah, player. He's a too. find. Yeah, he's a find. I think everybody is talking about Rajin Ravindra, but I think Omarza is like a key find. He bowls like 136, 137. And then he has scored like 370 runs this World Cup. That's as much as Barber. I mean, even more than Barber. So, so he, he actually is a great find. He's doing the job that, you know, if, if that stats Ardik Pandya had for India, we would have been very happy. At, at a number six doing that job. So, they, I mean, they will be going out of this World Cup, you know, far more happier side than even New Zealand, I think. Yeah, I mean, and the thing about Australia, though, is that, you know, Afghanistan are one type of team, you know, where they are, you, they are really well suited to playing in India, you know, because spin is their strong suit and you know, the, the middle of the innings where, you know, you win or lose games, they, they are at their best. They, they, are, they are able to all, like, really compete. Uh, but Australia are different. Australia are not particularly suited to these conditions. You know, I think Australia is still better suited to, like, Australian conditions or South African conditions the way they are. But, like, their basic quality is so much. I mean, I remember in the previews, Sid, 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 Sid saying that, you know, 
Australia are not really playing well and their results have not been good. But, you know, in the, in the, in the World Cup, all their big players show up and then they usually end up having a really good side. And that's pretty much how it's turned out. And Zampa has basically kept them in the tournament. Zampa and top order runs from Warner and, 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 and Marsh and, uh, Head and, and whoever else played in the top order for them. And then, uh, they're, no, they're very I good mean, with uh, in one day as uh, historically, and especially in the last uh, ten years with uh, the number of the volume of cricket increasing so much. Australia, uh, one of the teams, and England too have been for because England, see, England actually end up were ending up playing like different sides. Like there were there was not that much overlap for a while. Now of course there is a little more overlap, but for a while there was not that much overlap uh, between the Test and ODS. But Australia are really yeah. good at managing. The bilaterals and the World Cup world events, like they they ex, they do experiment a lot in bilaterals. They leave out a lot of players, bring in a lot of players, and then but by the time a world event comes, they seem to be in good shape uh, yeah. to cover all bases. And now Travis Head makes a big difference for them. He wasn't there in the first part of the World Cup, but the moment yeah. he comes in, he can get you like. Really quick runs up front. But he has a terrific one-day record. Huh? He has like 2,000 runs. He averages like in the 50s and all. And he scores very yeah. fast. I, don't know. I mean, but they, they and they have like one of, the, one, of the, one of the benefits they have, I think, is that like India, they're playing basically their test attack in their one-day side. I know. I mean, I still think if they had Lion in this World Cup, they would have done better. They would have had a better side. But you know, so the, the basic quality of their bowling, I mean, Hazelwood has been hard to hit, yeah. even though some of these wickets that they've played on have been very high scoring, like where these have been pitches on which Australia have made like 350 and more than 350. You know, like the New Zealand match where New Zealand lost by five runs, you know, or the Australia-South Africa match, uh, which was also not like a low scoring game by any means. You know? So... But they has the, their basic quality is so good that you know, especially given this format, you know, you think about Australia's World Cup, uh, the start to this World Cup, they lost two on the trot. You know, if you had like a super six type situation, losing two on the trot means to qualify in the top two from that group, it becomes extremely difficult. But this format, it basically allows like quality to sort of you know, rise to the top, essentially. You know, it's very hard to sort of wing it and, you know, do better than, say, scraping fourth place in, in this format. You know. So, uh, you know, because think about it. I mean, Australia, India, you can have a Super 6 group with India, Australia, uh, South Africa, and three other teams. And Australia lose to India and South Africa. And basically, no, you, you don't India have to, South Africa are going to be first. It, it happened in 99. Yeah. Steve Waugh did it. It was so difficult yeah. and Steve Waugh managed to do it. And also, in the 2007 World Cup, if you lost two in a row, you go home, basically. <laughs> it yeah. was like Pakistan did. But, they lost the first two games and that was it. They were done. I mean, even 2003, you know, England, they forfeited that one game in Zimbabwe. That made their life very, very difficult. Yeah? I mean, the, the qualification became very tough for them. But one thing though, we should we should get to the bowling here. Yes, they've been good, and I can understand what you're saying about Hazelwood. He's been hard to hit, but there's been like a vast gulf between fast bowling from other teams and fast bowling from India. Right? I mean, the Indian fast bowlers have been so superior to everybody else that even the even like Australian attack, which has not been bad. Looks bad in comparison. Like if if you look at the way these guys, the Shami, Siraj, and Bumra are bowling, you're like, why isn't every other fast bowler? Why aren't the other fast bowlers able to do this? And then you realize they're not able to do this because these guys have been so good. Yeah. So that's what that's the problem. No, we were all talking about Hardik Pandya, Hardik Pandya, Hardik Pandya not being there. India will struggle now. Hardik Pandya is not there, and the people who are struggling are the opposition. The opposition is now not able to play 50 overs against India because this guy is averaging 7 and striking at 9 balls per wicket. Now, the other Ooh, people... Shami, are, right? Yeah, Shami. But those are like ca cartoon figures, man. Those are not... Re 
that, that's ridiculous that's even in a video game that would be like you know cheat code. yeah yeah i mean now kuldeep yadav and jadeja will get pissed man because they would have gotten like 15 wickets because this guy is not letting any match go beyond 20 overs i i i mean what the hell i mean people now oppositions will now wish that hardik pandya gets well miraculously and comes back because they ca- i mean shami already bumrah and siraj were too much with jadeja and uh, kuldeep now shami is there these guys effectively plug that hole and 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 this is one world cup i think where you know if you have a high quality test attack as the kd was saying you are going to be really hard to beat i mean uh, the teams that have come up they all have like very similar test attacks even south africa rabada engidi maraj they all bowl in tests as well if nokia was here he would have, he's also a test bowler no for them so uh, jansen so they have like four test bowlers Uh, yeah. Australia, Australia have like four, right? four, uh, three. Wait, England also. I, I mean, in, ironically for England though, like their their test bowler Mark Wood, he went for like a lot, and I think that you know that there's a certain kind of pace bowler, you know, that the kind of pace bowler who like is is abs- keeps bowling through seam up and just tries to rely on pace. that type of bowler is being hammered you know mark wood hari srof uh you know i think norte would have been hammered as well norte has actually been hammered in one day games in, in india in But general mohammad shami was doing what then he is also he is also he doing is, exactly okay. that no they are not not at all i mean the thing that the indian bowlers have mastered is that they have realized that there are some basic raw materials which is basically fitness endurance uh you know uh, so that you keep your pace up to what your normal pace is but beyond that what they are able to do and what they seem to work on is two things one is mastery of length so they can they can pull their length back and pull their length forward as they want to and the second is making sure that you're doing something with the ball you know making sure that you're getting the ball to do something on the pitch you know like pakistan have that one bowler who does that from time to time I mean, Wasim Khan or Mohammad Wasim or something in name. Mohammad Wasim Junior. Yeah, yeah. Ju- Wasim Junior. Yeah, he's he is the one guy among them who's constantly trying to do something with the ball. He'll bowl cutters. He'll roll his fingers over the ball. He'll bowl cross seam. He'll bowl with a wobble seam. He'll bowl with a bolt upright seam. You know, he'll lower his arm. He is trying something all the time. You know, and then there's something which I once read in a Bharat Arun interview. and i don't really know how to describe it but something about how you how you use your body in your delivery strike you know and apparently it, it's it's sort of an analogous to how you know they say that the spinner should bowl from the legs you know it it's like that you know that's what lets you sort of release the ball well make sure it's coming out well so that it does something in the air for you and does something off the pitch for you you know and they're doing that i mean i mean mohammad siraj when people say he is bustling you know he bustles in you know that's because he is putting in so much work in each delivery you know he you look at his c position you look at the way he releases the ball he rarely releases it in you know the basic you know uh, standard you know cricket 101 whatever they teach you you know keep your two fingers on the seam and 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 try to uh, try to get your wrist behind the ball and try to release it he rarely does that you know like that that's just basic that you all any bowler who does that will get hammered over here but these guys are putting in so much work on the ball when they are bowling you know and and what's that give, what that's giving them is it's giving them like variation in speed it's giving them variation in bounce and it's giving them more traditional things like seam and swing also you know and when you are trying to beat an attacking bat that's useful they have another advantage which is that they don't really have a weak bowler you know so so they are always bowling at batters uh, wickets are falling even when they are not bowling you know for each of them that is so, the key kd that is the key yeah, when you said it makes mark their would, life easier when you said mark would gets hit 
it's not yeah. just that mark would gets hit there is no support it's from the other end yeah there is yeah. nothing there they are getting hammered at the other end also i think that's a one point that you made is very crucial because a lot of these teams have come with like bowlers who made their reputations in t20 and are not able to get that step up to one day it's like pakistan for instance i think haris rauf is a probably a very good t20 bowler but i am not sure about him as a one day bowler i looked Same, up, i looked up his record he has 16 wickets before today's game so he has not in, i mean in in eight yeah. or nine matches he has 16 wickets so that is great but the point but is spot i mean pakistan are playing a lot against like zimbabwe nepal that kind of no 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 in this world cup he has 16 uh. wickets in nine, nine eight matches or something which means he's picking wickets the problem is he lacks control he takes two for 72 which teams would gladly give you in a 10 over spell they'll give you two wickets if they get yeah. 72 out of you and secondly yeah. when he's bowling the pakistan have made him bowl as the first change so he's bowling alongside spinners like shadab khan usama mir who lack control who themselves bowl like and shadab khan and usama mir themselves are t20 bowlers struggling to make the step up to one day yeah so so <laughs> even if this guy goes for runs if there is control at the other end he can then you know justify bowling attacking lengths or like you know pace a pace on in small grounds like bangalore where he gets hammered so he can justify all that but the problem is now he has to also defend which he does not know how to do or uh, defend not in the t20 sense uh, defend by defend i mean bowl you know uh, one length and uh, two a field in t20 you have to bowl like six different lengths in six different balls prevent boundaries Uh, that is not happening with him so that's the problem or as ashwin that. said or as ashwin said you have to string together six bad deliveries <laughs> yeah so that that probably is not happening across the board for pakistan and that shows in their record no so yeah. in the way they are number 6 now and i think if they get 100 to 1 or 200 something against england today they're going to be number 5 which is kind of a good spot for whatever they have shown in this world cup batting or bowling wise So okay, let me ask you a, let me ask you a Twitter trivia question ha huh? Mahesh and uh, Ashoka and say uh, who, who has the best economy rate in the 2020 world all teams i know this of course you, that's why you excluded india you said okay excluding india who's got the best economy rate because you wanted to exclude our man ashwin right justice for ashwin yes Ashwin is a Ashwin is going to be you know he is going to be like the Prithvi Shaw of World Cups you know if India win in 2020 <laughs> Prithvi Shaw played Actually, like Prithvi Shaw played like six balls and beat Australia and Australia twice in a test series you know Actually, Ashwin, Ashwin won't be like Sunil Walson because Ashwin actually played a game, unlike Sunil Walson. Yeah, but didn't play a that means, game. but he does the Walson doesn't get like technically Walson doesn't get a winner's medal, no, like. Ashwin actually gets it because he's played one match in both the World Cups. You know, Walson gets uh, an interview every few months. He'll get an interview. How did it feel to be the only every person to years, not, not play? Every few months, every four years, <laughs> every four years. Yeah, but but one thing, uh, Rohit's you know, genius captaincy India. will come when he plays Ashwin in the final. He's saving him up for the final for the oh, big yeah, round. Yeah, yeah. That that's actually true. It could be true, huh? If uh, legendary Ashwin, Ashwin man, he played two matches in 2011, and India won the World Cup. <laughs> and he's played one match in this, and India have not lost a game so far. <laughs> Now Rohit is going to play Ashwin in the 11 in the final, and Ganguly will come and say, "I told Rohit to do it." You're talking about Ashwin, right? When India played Australia in their first match in Chennai, which Ash- Ashwin was uh, there, and it was a Sort of a low scorer, and India spinners did really well. Jadeja got wickets in this, so I I was thinking that if India continue to play on these kind of wickets and the spinners continue to do well, you know there'll be this classic trope that keeps coming up in Test cricket, right? Oh, these guys are just preparing pitches to suit their spinners, and that they are just it to, all, they're just it already did. It already did, yeah. even without all that. It did. But, it did come up. But that's why I'm so glad this has been such a great World Cup for the fast bowlers. And there was that one evening in uh, Mumbai when India played Sri Lanka, right? And there was this period of like the initial phase when Sri- India were bowling, 
Bumrah's Bumrah started off, and then Siraj, and then Shami. It was like mesmerizing. It was absolutely mesmerizing to watch, like a prop, like a test match cricket, high intensity bowling. Sri Lanka had no clue whatsoever. I do not even blame their batters. I mean, Kusal Mendes, poor guy, is trying to defend. Uh, in a, in a playing a perfectly legitimate defense to a ball that beats his bat, clips the top of off. How do you? What do you do, man? I mean, this is like bowling of such high class and such high quality, and it was amazing to watch the, the way Siraj and uh, Bumrah bowled that day. And Shami, of yeah. course, has been like uh, magical throughout. Prepare do a bad day, huh? Don't. I mean, <laughs> no, no, that is okay. I mean, that doesn't mean that uh, that you don't they haven't been to celebrate. there see actually this world cup has pretty much played the way this entire uh, let's say india's home test dominance has played out over the last you know whatever 10 to 15 years right yeah. indian fast bowlers in india are far superior to any other fast bowlers who come here the indian spinners are of course far superior to any spinners who come here and the indian batsmen are able to bat like far better than any other batsmen who come here so that sort of triangular advantage uh, is just too much to over you know and and in a way this world cup has been like mini test cricket uh of of the typical indian test season that is all fine ah huh, mahesh but shreya sayer has not yet proved that he belongs at this level okay yeah yeah this is the problem you have such great advantages you will start finding like the yeah. uh, most trivial thing to complain about and, and uh, people s- yeah surya kumar yadav you know he's a 20 over cup player you know usse jyada he cannot manage So, he only gets he 20 doesn't... overs man he only gets 20 overs <laughs> top order so, manages 30 overs what will you do no just just think of a you know a similar conversation in the 80s right uh, with the uh, west indies just i mean imagine no you know the problem is larry gomes against the short ball he has a short ball problem short ball every uh, bloody winning every single match going uh, dominating everybody bowling everybody out for less than 100 runs you are still complaining about uh, one uh, guy's uh, footwork and short ball das uh, loki's technique is not up to the mark <laughs> <laughs> no no there's also this imagine if das loki and jeff dujon were facing the west indian bowlers they would not be able to face them who cares they are never going to face them man why you bothered but no. let's talk about uh, batting i think yeah. uh, it's important to talk about batting as much as we love uh, love the indian bowlers let's uh, talk a bit about the batting kohli is just no. phenomenal huh? i mean yeah let's skip the openers like for now uh, no, that's the only reason why i wanted to talk about it <laughs> like you know the the south africa game right like the way rohit started and rohit and gil both started This is again a pattern, right? The moment he realizes that the best way to best time to score is against fast bowlers against a new ball, he accelerates so quickly, and and often it comes off, and that made a massive difference to the end end score, right? I mean, sure, Kohli played a great knock. I think Shreyas Iyer played a really good knock. Uh, he started off slow, and the way he accelerated uh, on a pitch which was not coming onto the bat, which is a very very tricky pitch to bat on. Uh, so he's here as always. He does. He accelerated against the spinners, even though initially he was struggling a little bit. Uh, but but the batting has clicked. I mean, of course, it's important to talk about bowling, especially in the Indian context where we don't talk enough about bowling. But the way the batting has clicked and sort of these are not easy wickets. It's not like on a flat wicket they are piling on three hundred runs. The South Africa game, India pretty much batted South Africa out of the game on a wicket like that to score so much runs. the the game was done by the first half i don't think even without the bowling attack the game was done by the first half yeah that that's uh, definitely true i mean the bowlers effectiveness has a large part to do with the batting too because when a team is chasing 300 plus the chances they have to take is so much higher that uh, you know uh, a good bowling will invariably end up uh, getting those results so yes i think the runs have made a big difference for instance if south africa were chasing 250 or 240 which is probably what that pitch uh, was pretty much i think it was a 250 260 pitch and india did far better than that to get 300 even that would have been tough against this indian attack but they would have approached it, it would have been a contest it would have been a contest same thing right with um, you know england uh, sri lanka england england, uh, in- england england for instance yeah so it's it's the batting has given the bowling a lot of cushion um uh, yeah eventually even if india had scored a mid- middling scores the bowling might have kept them in the game but uh, i think that's also for 
Rohit and Kohli, right? It's important to mention. I think they they are feeding off each other perfectly. Like one one guy, Rohit is basically saying that if I take my chances, and given the form that I'm in, and anyway the chances are all coming off so well, if I take my chances, if I can upset like the rhythm of the first the fast bowlers, if I can go after them, use my feet, or you know play the kind of uh, you know extraordinary uh, way in which he's been batting. I mean this is not uh, this is very much reminiscent of uh, you know peak Sachin. Uh, the way Rohit has been batting through the World Cup. And that's uh, not something that comes along every once in a while. I mean, it's not like uh, Rohit Sharma is going to be batting like this or has been like, batting at this level for so long. He's been a good, very good one-day player. But the fact that he's taking those chances and then Kohli is basically doing the reverse by taking no chances. So one guy is saying, I'm going for broke. Another guy is saying, I'm making sure that I'm being there irrespective of uh, the situation and making sure I'm anchoring the innings, I think is really working well for the team and everybody else then gets to, you know, play their game. I mean, you, 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 you they are great, good enough, like Gill and and, uh, yes, and everybody else is good enough to play their game. India have lucked out also because uh, for Kohli to be, you know, controlling the chase and batting at his own pace, you need insurance on either end. So, you get Rohit on top and you also get Shreyas, who can, you know, who actually has a career strike rate of 100 man, in ODI. So, he bats really fast. And you have Surya Kumar Yadav to follow. So, it allows Kohli to, you know, assess and bat the way, in, in the pace that he wants to. He doesn't get that kind of luxury in T20s, obviously. But in ODI, he's gotten this lineup where he can, you know... Uh, even have 20 or 40 balls and he can catch up because the others are going at around 6 or 6 and above. That has really, you know, uh, Kohli has actually found a sweet spot in this in this batting lineup because this batting lineup helps him to, you know, control the pace of his own batting. Otherwise, actually he, reminding me a bit of uh, Sachin in the post Sevag phase, right? So, in tests. So, when Sevag came into test cricket, and started blasting everything from the first ball, then you, India not only got good starts, but it also allowed Sachin to play the kind of risk-free game that uh, he could and lend that solidity to the side. And then after that, of course, you had uh, all these other batters around. So it's sort of that dynamic playing out here too. Yeah, yeah, but come on, these, these are, this is a different class of Indian batting. Man. I mean... Yeah, 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 of course. Of Tendulkar course. alone was better than... All any of these current Indian batters, but I mean, all of them are better than pretty much everybody else from that time. You know, I mean, there's a there's a period in Yura. Actually, if you think about it, there's a period in say Yuraj's career, like from about say 2006 to 2011 until he got he got ill. Those five years of Yuraj's career. Uh, and, you know, when, and Tony, and, you know, the, those five years of Suresh Raina's career. If you leave out those three players, you know, uh, those three patches of those three players, I mean, those those are equal to what these guys are doing. You know? I mean, they have, they have so much versatility, so much ability. I mean, KL Rahul is an astonishing player. Right? He's a test opener. He bats in the middle order in this uh, one-day side. And when need be, he, 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 he scores quick runs. When need be, he's able to, you know, hold an end up, you know, and play shots. You know, you can always tell how KL Rahul is going to go, you know, when, because when he's going to go, he, he backs away to leg and tries to square cut the spinner from the stumps. You know, and he always, he so far he's always played like middle the ball, I have missed the ball. But when he's trying to do that, you know that he's sort of going for it. I mean, the the range that KL Rahul has is not just of being able to play at different speeds. And the, the great advantage this side has, that all of them are six hitters. That's the thing. So, you know, for them to have a bad day, it requires a lot of things to go wrong. It could happen, by the way, because uh, the semi-finals in Mumbai 
uh, and Mumbai has shown that under lights, in at least in the first 10-15 overs, it's really hard to match. So I it, am I am doubtful, dude. I I think mostly this World Cup is being won by India. A bold bold prediction, but not so bold prediction. Also, I mean, this looks no, like. I mean, it is a rational prediction. At this I mean, point, that is uh, that. I think all of us will agree that they are the outright favorites to win this World Cup. But I'm saying that what has happened. See, in 2019 also they were an extremely good side, but they got that sort of a lottery of a day, you know. I mean, or two days. No, no, no. Got. See that even in 2019, okay, even during the league stages before that New Zealand game, I could see how this team would lose. There were a lot of things that could go wrong. This this particular squad that they have assembled for this World Cup. I am trying to be as pessimistic and negative as possible to see how things can go wrong considering all the opposition that they are going to face. I don't know I'll tell you how I mean, things can go wrong. I'll tell I mean, you how things you have to, can go wrong. I'll really, tell you how things can go wrong in New one Zealand simple can... example. Virat Kohli is not dropped at 20 for 3. <laughs> Then things yeah, will go right. Now. Too, yeah, yeah, but, but first you are receiving 20 for 3, then Virat Kohli not being dropped. I mean, like, it's not like you're saying that, that in itself involves a series no, of things which is unlikely dismissals. to happen. I mean, 2 for 3 is itself a freak, right? So you're assuming 2 for 3 first, then you're assuming 20 for 4. So, anyway, so what I'm talking about New Zealand and Bombay, right? So, New, Mumbai, New Zealand make uh, 270. Which I think they, with Williamson back and uh, batting in the way he has, what a beautiful innings he played against Pakistan, right? Williamson, yeah. ab- ab- amazing, uh, like purely for the quality of batting, stunning knock. And with him back, they can make 270, 280. And then Saudi Bolt and uh, Ferguson in the first 15 overs could be a handful. I mean, yeah. I, I won't put that totally beyond, uh, uh, and you know, Sander I won't say. To kill the game after that, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. possible. I mean, of course, it it will be a surprise. It will still be a surprise because India will be favourites to win that game. But I don't think it's uh, totally out of question and all that. But I think if they get through the semi-finals, then uh, at Ahmedabad, I would favour them uh, against any team because uh, though that conditions I think uh, will require. Will uh, India has those? Uh, India has the attack cover uh-huh. for that. But, you know, Jaspreet Nubra is going for 3.65 runs per over in this World Cup. That is that is unfair. Like, that that cannot possibly last. Like, he's going to have one day when, you know, a batter will swing at him and, like, get four or five edges, which will go for four. Okay. And then he'll middle a couple more and go for four. And his first spell will go for, like, 30 instead of, instead of like, eight or whatever it's going for right now. Like, he's not going to have like four overs, 11 for two every time. It's not possible. Okay. <laughs> so far, yeah. he has. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, it could happen. But uh, anyway, let's wait and watch. I mean, New Zealand have, uh, you know, again, irrest- ir- despite all their all their uh, cups here and no. there, they eventually you know got to I'm the semis. You know what I think they'll do in, in Bombay? I think hmm. they will play Jameson. Yeah, they could. It's a good option. That's a because, problem uh, because there's a bounce in the one kiddie pitch and Jameson bothers India. Yeah. See, even Afghanistan, Australia in Bankade, uh, you know, after the 20th over, then things became like easy. But until then, even the yeah. the fast bowlers like, uh, I mean, Omar Zai uh, uh, was getting good seam. You could see like proper movement of the pitch. So, and Naveen, Naveen and Omar Zai, both of them. Yeah. So, uh, and anyway. I wouldn't put it past our guys where, you know, Roy Sharma, genius that he is, he'll win the toss and choose to bowl or something. Why would he do that? I no, mean, no, no. no. Roy will say that uh, because Ganguly gave me the captaincy as a tribute, I did this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, let's go, go move on to a few other things. Uh, New Zealand made it, of course, as we expected. NRR Kings. Um, Gap got their run rate very, very high early on and then had to <laughs> eventually found a way. It was, I think they lost them three in a row or something, or maybe even more. So, and yeah. It's, it's, it, worth, it's worth reflecting on this NRR business, you know. That 
the net run rate measures efficiency you know it says that how well do you contest the average delivery you know what quality of bowling do you offer when you're bowling and what quality of batting do you offer when you're batting you know and new zealand and you know efficiently assembled squads will do well on nrr you know and inefficiently assembled squads will do badly on nrr and the difference between new zealand and pakistan is probably that you know that you know new zealand are a much more efficiently constructed squad than than uh, than pakistan so so their batter can you, can you explain that a bit more what do you yeah i mean yeah. their batter i mean look you saw like you seen rizwan and babar bat this entire world cup for large periods of their innings they are content to accept whatever the bowler is prepared to offer them you know like if you get something pitched up babar will drive it you know he'll play a cover drive or a on drive or a straight drive or a leg glance or whatever you know if he gets something short he will square cut it if he gets something short he will pull it you know but that's not been enough in this world cup you know like you see daryl mitchell or aiden markram you know or travis head or you know mitchell marsh or shreyas ayer or shubman gill or any of these players and they are picking their spots they are targeting boundaries they are you know or ben stokes they are they are going for the they are taking the bowler on you know and that's a much more efficient way of competing you know because you are going to get more out of that's the difference between scoring 300 and winning by 70 runs and scoring 370 and winning by you know 150 runs you know and that, oh, that's a good that point is, because when i spoke about williamson in that innings against pakistan i noticed superb. exactly that i noticed no yeah. and the thing is williamson in a test match and williamson playing a one day there's a stark difference because in a test match he is basically like he's trying to score in like his preferred zones but in a one day yeah. match he's trying to score he's getting out of his comfort zone and trying to score in his zones that he would normally not score in so yeah that's that i've noticed yeah and so this efficiency also works on the bowling side now so if you have a bowler you know who might drift onto your pads like one or two times in over or drop it short if one or two times in over and and then go for like 70 instead of like 50 or 55 you know but then your argument is well okay he is going for 70 but he can also bat and he can also give me 25 runs so the question is are you coming out ahead in that in that bargain you know and what india have chosen is basically that okay we don't care about the bowler you know who's who's who can bat and you know will bowl a few bad balls we want to go with our best bowlers because we want to make sure that the batters who are taking chances because the batters have to take chances have to take huge risks so you look at kuldeep and 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 uh, jadeja you know Jadeja has got a better economy rate than Kuldeep Yadav and that's mainly because he is basically impossible to run down the pitch you know the the one time i have seen a batter do it successfully against him was Daryl Mitchell uh yeah, when New Zealand versus India and that was when Mitchell was like in his 70s you know he was really well set and he ran down and like he hit like a 96 kilometers per hour uh, ball from uh, from from Ravindra Jadeja for a straight six but other than that to take a chance against kuldeep and jadeja they have to sweep from the stumps or reverse sweep from the stumps and those are very risky options you know because if you miss your out you know because the ball is on the stumps you know and you're playing across the line and against you're often playing against the spin also so you know the chance of you not middling it also is is significant right you can right climb on your glove and you can go to the wicket keeper or whatever a lot of bad things can happen so it's a high risk thing so it's the same with the bowling no if you can get something off the pitch if you can force the the if you can get the ball to move off the pitch you can if you can get variable bounce you can do something then you're increasing the risk of that attacking batting so in that sense this idea of you know picking your best bowlers and making sure that you will not offer you, you will offer fewer freebies than the opposition over 50 overs 
your opposition's bowlers will offer over 50 overs is another way of constructing an efficient squad that is why you're saying some teams uh, sort of reduce their margin of defeat even even if they lose yeah, because they're because efficiently they're, built they can reduce the margin of defeat yeah yeah you know you know, they fall further behind mm. they they fall they don't fall as far behind rather ever yeah so if you see like the top 4 teams for nrr are the teams that have made the semi finals so you know the yeah. the pakistan afghanistan everybody has negative i mean pakistan is just barely positive but everybody else is negative in yeah, but they're going to they're going to i think they'll fall below and un- underwater by the end of yeah, this yeah now game. they're going to probably lose this game also by a big margin yeah yeah oh yeah so, they're 170 for 7 so yeah okay so uh, looking at the points table i think we have uh, covered quite a few teams uh, south africa i don't know i mean they south africa is a weird team man I mean, suddenly they will have like one uh, massive monster batting day and their bowlers will be like uh, absolutely explosive, unplayable deliveries. And then some days they'll be like, oh, okay, they're struggling to get to 250 and they're just making the most of it. It's, it's a up and down kind of team. I, I don't know what to expect from them. No, wait. Really? Uh, like, see, this, this there is this story. I I hope they are not buying into that, their, that story of they can't chase and whatnot. Essentially, if you see where they have chased and you know struggled are places where the ball has gotten stuck a little bit, it has gotten slow, and it has generally been difficult to chase. One free chase that they missed was against Netherlands. I don't know why they failed there. Uh, that I, I don't have any explanation. But the other two chases that they... One, I think... Uh, was Afghanistan Pakistan. and Pakistan. Yeah. Yes, Afghanistan and Pakistan. They won, but people are saying that they were very shaky and whatnot. But I thought, you know, uh, those surfaces were slightly difficult to score that many runs. I mean, and they did well to chase them. Yesterday they chased it. They chased like nearly 250. Against Pakistan, they chased 270. So I thought, you know, they were not that bad. Another chase where they failed was against India, but against India, I think they had no idea what happened to them. I mean, nobody had any idea. Before they could even think of chasing anything, they were all out. But the worrying thing for them is that their semi-final, the funny, but the semi-final is also in Calcutta. So that that is worrying if uh, for them with the surface. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the, the Eden Gardens has been tough for the team batting second, man. Look at Pakistan, they're 170 for seven. Uh, South Africa lost to India. Uh, uh, and, you know, chasing at Eden Gardens, you know, is, is going to not be a, going to be no joke. But, you know, the, the thing is that the, the those two chases you're talking about, no, Ashoka, uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan, I think... I don't think it's a coincidence that in both those cases, they were playing against batting sides which were like underpowered. You know, like I think most teams would have made 300 against them. Uh, like like India, Australia, New Zealand would have made 300 against them uh, where Pakistan made 270. You know, and you know, Afghan, it's the same with the Afghanistan match. You know, so they're, they're great Strength, I think, is that they have to have a good day with the ball. And there, I think, they have an interesting problem, which is that they don't seem to be sure whether to play Shamsi or Rabana, whether to play the spinner or the fast pull. And the problem is, I think, that the, the gap in quality is significant for them between Rabada and Shamsi, as you can imagine. So, so, so there, there, it's not... They have the, South Africa's thing as a, it seems to me is that they don't really have a settled eleven that they are sure of playing. That's an odd thing to say about a team which is one seven out of nine. But uh, that 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 seems to be a hole in their in their whole setup. Yeah, and I think I don't know. Is that they, maybe that's just me thinking, seeing something? I maybe think they. Not I think that. they. No, I think they are mostly okay. They see that Kotsi gives them a good. Good uh, dimension, actually. He's uh, uh, a good bowler. He's quick, and then he's 
can bat also uh, is a handy bat yeah no that's a problem no so uh, between kotsea and uh, rabada and samsi they have to pick two people yeah and and they don't have a second spinner they're, they're outside of maharaj they are only going to rely on markram that is not a good option uh, so so they need that second spinner in places like eden gardens uh, who they are going to drop is what causes all that problem uh you know i don't know why they won't drop engidi i would even have kotsea and rabada uh, well, i think rabada rabada has the same problem as cummins i think you know okay. he, you know he, he's or uh, rather he has the same problem as donald not the same problem as cummins cummins has the opposite problem but rabada basically with a one with a white new ball he, he seems to go for runs he prefers to bowl first change you know so that that well, cummins, and also well, cummins the, wants to well, cummins wants to open the bowling yeah yeah and and south africa's other problem is that marco jansen has to bowl with the new ball because he's left arm and he's basically going to swing the ball so uh, either if they drop ngd they still have to find a new ball bowler and i don't know do, do you think kotsay will take the new ball i i don't think so i don't think no so. i don't yeah. think so no i think uh, ngd is good i think ngd is good But, for india because uh, yeah. ngd gets bowls good lengths for india yeah 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 But the thing is that 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 problem may be sadly solved for them because Engidi went off, no? Yeah, he's, that's true. He's, he's shaky. He may not be, be ready. Yeah, the thing is, even the reason is that if I mean, I would always first of all, Australia, South Africa, for some reason, maybe it's history, maybe it's just uh, the amount of. Uh, those games in the past i just would always put australia as favorites to win that game for some reason but the thing with eden is that if i if australia are chasing say you know 250 something i would give them a chance rather than south africa chasing 250 something simply because with i think with hazelwood and zampa australia will still have a pretty good sort of chance to defend even if it's a yeah. mid mid size total yeah yeah and i think one of the ominous things i saw today is that i think steve smith is back in form mm. like they wanted him to get a hit and he's got his hit like he got like 60 or something yeah the, so the last 30 runs were really good so anyway we have covered uh, most of it i think we're towards the end of this podcast but uh, we have to mention the most important event that happened in the last uh, two weeks maybe in the last two years or maybe ever the first time someone got timed out and uh, the whole world went mad because angelo matthews wanted to adjust his trap and then shakib appeal and then of course the greatest rivalry in cricket bangladesh versus sri lanka things just went uh, went nuts or as uh, fidel fernando of cricket for us called it the nagin dance rivalry <laughs> it just went nuts <laughs> <laughs> And, and what? I, first of all, I I just don't get how England, which has been so bad in this World Cup, still found English fans to come and outrage over this this matter because it was against the spirit of the game. What? No, I mean I I don't know about spirit of the game and all, but come on, man, Angelo Matthews has been playing since I was like in my college or something. Like for he's been playing like three decades now. Three to uh, I mean, he I might have even know. played with Dilara Fernando. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't even know, dude. Uh, so he's been playing for such a long time, man. Let him bat, no? What is the big deal? Two minutes, two minutes, fifty seconds. Umpire told him. Uh, so I found. See, anyways, uh, Shakib was well within his right. He appealed. They gave it out. all that is fine i am like chill no you anyways you have gone out of the uh, gone out of the tournament and sri lanka were not like 400 for 2 when he walked in they were like 137 for 4 could have know, chilled and let the man bat a bit yeah, i felt you know i felt on, slightly I, what, you are you serious if you it's like it's precisely what i said about the mujib catch right okay mujib catches maxwell afghanistan go on to win famous victory great you know everybody is like thrilled and happy and all but we would have missed out on the 
greatest one of the greatest one day innings man if not the greatest one day innings same way angelo matthews could have batted but you would have missed out on the most comedic controversy of this world cup yeah probably i mean it was, yeah. it, was it was fantastic it was like the most uh, i mean icc should look into such things too the icc should find out what is the efficient way of you know uh producing a shit house moment like this in every match <laughs> <laughs> they are missing out on stuff like that so i think uh, south africa and new-, new zealand have been good guys for too long i mean find something yeah, otherwise you can't keep moaning that odis are dying you have to do things like this He like kartik uh, shared uh, we, we highlights clip right of the uh, india australia match where they had basically removed the, that the kohli's uh, kohli being dropped right so they airbrushed that out so anybody seeing that highlights after uh, 10 years will not even realize they may not will not realize he has dropped unless they go deep they dive in to go and see read the report and all that so same way introduce these sort of drama into different matches no what what do you lose just say that okay in this let's time one fellow out here let's get this other fellow handling the handling the ball just to make cricket more interesting ah uh, i'll give you the like the the you know the i don't know the intercontinental ballistic missile of such controversies you know he you know he has this habit of you know when he plays a ball and it yeah, 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 drops yeah he picks it up he picks yeah. it up and now i think every time he does that he looks at the fielder and then says can i give it to you and then gives it to you in which case he's safe because you know if you do it with the consent of the fielding side it means yeah you are agreeing that the ball is dead and so it's, it's not it's not out but if one time let's say india like chasing and they need like 100 in the last 15 overs and they are like say four down or something like that and kohli like he forgets to ask and he picks up the ball and returns it and you know somebody like pat comins appeals you know or you know temba bauma appeals or even kane williams some appeals he will have to be given out and then you could have like literally have a nuclear war <laughs> kane williams and appealing will be funny man i mean the ni- the nicest guy in the nicest team appealing for handling the ball that will that will take things to a new level yeah but we have been very very unfair to netherlands huh? and because i think they they were involved in like i think the most possibly like you know seen from a little bit of a distance i think they were involved in what was possibly both the most interesting match in the world cup and also the weirdest match in the world cup you know in which they beat south africa you know this is probably yeah. the biggest upset in cricket since i don't know when so since oh what could you say since afghanistan beat uh, pakistan out <laughs> what what biggest ups no oh, man that's not a, that's not that's not anything i think since like you know kenya beat west indies in 96 oh, or something oh like, like that that stage of upset yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. for sure for sure yeah i think the netherlands beating south africa was a big thing but of course see kenya back in 96 the level at which they were uh, compared to the level at which netherlands were i mean i can see netherlands beating teams man the netherlands have beaten england before in a in a in an odi so uh, sorry t20 so yeah. i'm 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 okay i mean i think it's a big upset maybe it's the upset of the tournament for sure but uh, yeah uh, there's one I thing we should mention uh, about the netherlands it's like now okay the icc can have whatever formats they want for the world cup if 14 teams 12 teams 10 teams they are the authority they should decide i don't like the 10 team restriction but okay fine but when you have 10 teams and when a team qualifies no as the netherlands has then the icc should at least make sure that the facilities and travel arrangements and lodging for all the teams is the same you know like the icc should be able to shell out and do that like like right now apparently the netherlands are like you know they are they are sharing rooms and they are traveling coach and etc etc you know and it's not fair yeah but tomorrow they are going to play india and india are definitely not doing those things you know like you you can i think the icc should have you can either be exclusive but then treat whoever makes it really well or you be inclusive 
you cannot be like exclusive and like treat team differentially like this yeah and in a world cup come on this is the least you yeah. can ask for i mean you need equitable treatment just across as, the board it's just reward for making it no i mean they did make it past like three full time test playing members of the icc west indies zimbabwe and ireland they did make it you know ahead of those three countries so yeah 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 this is uh, this is basic and uh, has to be uh, yeah i mean i'm not i'm not saying that the the netherlands are like you know in penury or anything like that i'm sure whatever facilities they've got whatever facilities their board is able to provide them are quite nice but still they are not equal oh. yeah it should be it should be all teams yeah especially travel and lodging these are basic i mean every team should get uh, every team should get that standard of travel and lodging uh, a certain standard anyway yeah i mean if the netherlands are going through like two hour flight delays because they are flying like uh, you know commercial economy and like if india are flying in a chartered plane then that's not fair no i mean yeah yeah obviously i mean already you know teams have a number of advantages that uh, you know purely because of the uh, financial might of the board like for instance in the the amount of uh, help that india can get you know with in support staff mass years and you know whatever you want you know physician doctors dietitians i'm sure other teams cannot have that level of uh, uh, coaching staff and a team and you know england do have a massive coaching staff but uh, for instance can uh, afghanistan and netherlands put have such a large staff can they afford it no they can't so already teams have vast advantages in terms of the resources at their disposal but yeah. on top of that if you have uh, if you are set back by travel and lodging then yeah, then the it gets skewed no the balance gets totally skewed i mean i think england have a cook and all yeah exactly so how many teams yeah. can afford to afford that you know yeah. that level of detail anyway i think uh, we are done with this podcast thank you so much for joining we we still have the semi finals and finals i mean of course india play netherlands tomorrow uh, but then we will have two semi finals in the week and then finals on the weekend uh, we'll hopefully be able to review <laughs> do at least one review we'll definitely do obviously a review at the end of the tournament but let's see if we can uh, do something after the semi final to the india semi final especially thanks for uh, listening thanks for your support thanks for your feedback comments 81allout.com is our website at 81allout is our handle on x a formerly called twitter we are also a crowd funded platform so you can chip in an amount of your choice at coffee ko-fi.com/81allout you can also support us by reading the books that we have republished uh, we republished uh, three works of uh, cricket literature that is war minus the shooting by mike parkesy cricket beyond the bazaar by mike coward and the summer game by gideon hay um, i'll link all that uh, when i post this podcast and uh, we'll join you in a few days time good night take care india have won the series they're going to get back for two india home lords goes wide